Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. You're listening now to the Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canaan. And before we get started, I want to remind people that if you'd like to listen to the State of the Union tonight, the address tonight begins at 9, and you can listen on our HD3 channel, The Source. Well, we have two main topics on today's show. Later on, we're going to hear about a bill in the Florida legislature that would make rooftop solar less financially attractive for consumers. It's being opposed by the solar industry and by environmentalists. But first up, we're going to hear about environmental issues in northern Pasco County from a group that's trying to protect the rural aspect of their region. Joining me right now by Zoom are Lisa Moretti, who was chair of a Rural Citizens Advisory Committee in northern Pasco County and is also part of a group called NoStJoRVPark.com. And we have Kelly Smith, who is part of the Northeast Pasco Citizens Oversight Committee. And Kelly, you're also running for Dade City Commission. Yes, that's correct. Yep, for the city of Dade City. Well, thank you so much for to both of you for joining me. And uh, why don't you tell us first, what is what was the purpose or is the purpose of the Northeast Pasco Citizens Oversight Committee? So the committee was started years ago when the county started to develop its comprehensive plan. And we realized that we needed something special for the rural area, which is, um, a specific district within Northeast Pasco. And so quite a bit of money was spent. Um, we had consultants brought in, millions of dollars spent to create a plan to design a rural area, lay it out, decide where the boundaries were. And then we realized that we needed to stay on top of that. <laughs> and uh, so Kelly and I are both part of the same group, but Kelly does more work on their behalf than uh, I do. So <laughs> kudos to you, Kel. <laughs> and so that's a voice. That's the voice of Lisa Moretti. But Kelly, what, what would you add to the purpose of that Northeast Pasco Citizens Adv Oversight Committee? And what can you also tell us about uh, the rules maybe for development in that rural boundary? Sure. So there's there's actually kind of a conglomeration of organizations and committees um, that are all focused on the Northeast Pasco Rural Protection Area. Um, the NERAC committee that Lisa just mentioned, um, the oversight committee, that was actually put together by the county commissioners um, because when the Northeast Rural, Northeast Pasco Rural Overlay District was created um, in 2005 or 2006, um, it was, created in response to a proposal for the village of Pasadena Hills and just some overall um, excessive development in that area. And the people in that area, you know, they lived there because it was rural, they wanted it to stay rural. And it's, you know, rural communities are a very important part of our entire um, Pasco ecosystem. So what that, what that uh, overlay did was it created, um, residential standards um, and, and some additional standards for um, roadways and, um, and things of that nature. And there was a plan to come back at a future time to have commercial standards developed. Um, so uh, the committee that Lisa chaired um, that unfortunately the county commissioners disbanded um, last month um, with no public notice or conversation, uh, I will add, um, that committee was really looking at the commercial standards um, and essentially what they um, really were doing was looking at non-residential standards, um, which is a, a little bit larger um, of a of a uh, you know thing to consider, but it was important because in a rural overlay area, you're going to have residential and commercial, and maybe some light industrial, and definitely some agricultural. Um, so it was important to make that distinction. Then yeah. there are a couple of community groups, um, one of which I'm part of, that you know doesn't have any authority, um, but is a fantastic organization of civic-minded and engaged citizens who um, are really the ones pushing to make sure that the commission is doing what they said they were gonna do. I was gonna add that I think it's really important that people understand that the people in the rural area are not naive enough to think that 
development isn't coming our way. We get that and we anticipated that. And that's why the comprehensive plan was laid out the way that it was. Um, our whole point is, is that we came to an agreement and we decided where those commercial aspects should be within the county, uh, where those and the overlay, uh, where the residential and the density levels should be and uh, how those things would be serviced. Um, there are, you know, everybody thinks, oh, you just throw up houses, but there are a lot of things that come into play when you do that. So um, the committee that I was the chair of, part of our job was to say, okay, there are things that are already zoned for commercial and what should be maintained with those? Should there be stuff added? Should there not be stuff added? And most importantly, um, I, I wanna stress that we are sort of the pressure valve for the county. And you can do development, but it should be around centralized nodes. We've, we've opted for this plan of centralized nodes. And that plan then allows for uh, development to happen in a way that the, the county can service it, but the county is always going to have to subsidize it. And so we, by not accessing those services and not requiring the level of service because of our low density, become the, the fail safe for the county's budget. And all the county's financial projections are tied to that. <laughs> so it's really important that we be who we are. <laughs> I just want to make sure that people understand that we aren't we aren't saying that all development's bad. We just say development should go where we all plan to put it. That's the voice of Lisa Moretti, who was the chair of a rural citizens advisory committee in northern Pasco County. We heard a moment ago that that was disbanded, and we'll we'll find out why in in just a minute. I'm going to get to that in just a bit. We also heard from Kelly Smith, who is a candidate for Dade City Commission and is part of the Northeast Pasco Citizens Oversight Committee. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan, and we're talking about development in rural areas. And I hope our listeners can, can get the idea that even if they're not in Pasco County, that this is something that really affects us all in the Tampa Bay area, and that you can tell your friends to listen in, even if you're in Manatee or Sarasota or Pinellas or Hillsborough or Polk, wherever you are, you know, this is Hernando, of course, this is a really important issue, development, especially development in, in the kind of rare um, and unique areas where that are rural still in the Tampa Bay area. So I want to set the scene for people who might not live in Northeast Pasco County. Uh, you may be traveling, if you're traveling north on I-75 from Tampa up through Pinellas County, you're going to encounter this area. There's some rolling hills. What are some other landmarks that people might know uh, in this area? If you're talking about Northeast Pasco County, what are some of the landmarks or, or towns or something that, pe that might, people might identify with? Kelly, why don't you tell them about Dade City? Sure. So um, obviously one of the big attractions is the city of Dade City. And I, um, I, I lived in Wesley Chapel for 12 years. I moved to Dade City two years ago and I moved here because I absolutely fell in love with Dade City and we had the opportunity to move. Um, I love our little town. I love the variety of businesses and restaurants. Um, if you're a foodie, Dade City is absolutely has to be on your list. Um, and it just is such an amazing um, small community. Um, and then outside of the city limits, you've got, um, well, actually within the city limits, you've got the Pasco County Fairgrounds. Um, but right outside the city limits, then you have the area of Blanton Road um, and Lake Iola Road, which is um, really a huge attraction for bicyclists. Um, and motorcyclists um, because there are those rolling hills and um, some of the highest elevations in the state of Florida are actually in this northeast section of Pasco County um, and it is just absolutely beautiful and so for me the attraction to this area is that diversity between you know the small main street town um, you know some subdivisions which you know are again it's it's all part of having a diverse area um, and then these beautiful rolling hills and the farmland and just those open spaces. We also are really enamored of our dark skies. We don't have any street lights. We maintain a low pollution, low light pollution. Um, I live out in the rural, rural area. And so I have um, bald eagles. I have a fox that lives under my back deck and brings her babies every year. Uh, we have a bobcat. We have a Florida panther and we're in there 
circular area, you know, that they like to uh, cruise around in. Of course, we have our alligators and all of that. Um, we have um, just a myriad of beautiful, amazing wildlife, sandhill cranes, wild turkeys. Um, you know, it's, it's a joy to be able to coexist with them. And for, we, we love that people want to come and take a drive through our area or come out and stargaze or um, hit our high tops and be able to see the whole area, you know, the broad vistas. Um, we have some amazing what we call view sheds, which was a new term to me when I first got here. Um, but, you know, these beautiful, expansive rolling hill areas and ponds and lakes and, and cows and horses all grazing about, you know, I mean, you, you almost expect like little blue bows and like they come prancing along type of thing because it's so picturesque, you know, but um, it's really, it's a unique aspect of Florida. I don't, think that there's any place else like this in the state of Florida. And once you pave it, then you lose it because those animals aren't going to be coming back. And when we lose the light, I mean, when we lose our dark skies, it's hard to get it back. So. That's the voice of Lisa Moretti. She was the chair of a rural citizens advisory committee in Northern Pasco County. She also has a website called nosaintjoerpark.com, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. And we also heard from Kelly Smith, who was, is a Dade City candidate for office and also part of the Northeast Pasco Citizens Oversight Committee. So why don't we talk right now about your website, nosaintjoerpark.com, Lisa Moretti. There, there was um, a 550-unit RV resort on 130 acres near I-75 in the rural zone kind of near the, not too far from the border with Hernando County, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so what's, what's the story with this RV park and why do you oppose it? So um, the RV park is on Lake Iola Road, which is a two lane scenic rural road. And um, this piece of property is not located near the interstate exchange, interchange, but the interstate does bind it on one side. So um, at first it was much more density. Uh, in our area, our density level is one dwelling unit per five acres. And as, a, as the uh, minimum, like you can't do anything less than that. <laughs> so um, all of a sudden we're talking about, you know, 24 times the density on a piece of land. And um, the property had formerly been owned by our county commissioner's sister. And um, it was sold to a developer as a rural ag zoning. And he has asked for two things. One is to increase his zoning and two, to create a special aspect in the comprehensive plan for RV parks specifically. So those two things start to create some um, precedents that other people that are at nearby properties can say, hey, you gave it to him, how come not me? So that was one point of opposition. Um, the next thing is, is that we're talking about 550 RVs. We are sewer and well, and we would like to stay that way. So they're going to have to put in a wastewater treatment plant on one of our lakes, and that's Lake Moody. If you've ever come up I-75 and you drive across this one part where there's lake on both sides, that's Lake Moody. So 75 bisected that. Um, we're talking about <laughs> two swimming pools, a splash pad, water hookups for all 550 units, um, uh, laundry facilities, bar and restaurant, um, also a fitness area, and um, they're touting a nature trail experience <clears throat> and that they'll have passive recreation on Lake Moody. All of us are a little bit chagrined at that idea because Lake Moody is also alligator central. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't want to see that. But more than that, too, is that this road, Lake Iola Road, is a beautiful scenic road and also extremely popular with bicyclists. And so when you talk about putting, they're actually, their focus is to attract the great big RVs, the super giant ones. And then most of those have a tow along behind them. And so our road isn't really designed to handle that kind of impact along with sharing it with both the motorcyclists and the um, bicyclists. Um, 
we don't have a lot of pedestrians out here because we're super rural. It's, you know, you got to walk pretty far to get to somebody else's house. <laughs> but um, it, we, we aren't designed to handle that sort of impact on that road. Uh, we're also, because we are on wells, uh, when we had oranges out here quite a bit before the greening really hit, uh, when they would go to freeze the crop, they pump a lot of water out to freeze the fruit on the tree. When they would do that, it would also dramatically reduce our water pressure. And a lot of our citizens out here ended up actually pumping sand out of their wells. So now we're looking at somebody coming in and doing 550 times two, because most people travel with someone, um, on top of our water usage. And we don't know how they're going to fulfill that water use. Um, also, our water in Pasco County goes to Pinellas and um, even further south in Hillsborough. Uh, we're their water supply. We sell them our water. <laughs> and so when we say, well, who's going to have enough water? You know, if you all of a sudden add all these, you know, we have a lot of subdivisions going in and that kind of thing. But now also on top of that, you're going to add this RV park in the rural area. This is insanity. How are our wells going to be affected? How are we going? We've been out here paying our taxes for years and we created this community. So what's the deal? Do we not matter? And we kind of just get brushed aside and we're told that we're not experts and that we the, the classic one was when we were told that uh, we didn't know what quality of life was and had no voice in making those opinions. <laughs> it was like, uh, we live here. <laughs> so it's, it's been an interesting ride. Let's just say that. <laughs> We're speaking with Lisa Moretti, who is chair of a Rural Citizens Advisory Committee in Northern Pasco County. She has a website called nosaintjoerpark.com. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan. It's 1023 in the morning. And Lisa, um, I said you were part, were the chair of a Rural Citizens Advisory Committee in Northern Pasco, but in a, in a meeting, um, I believe it was in, was it in January or yeah, in January, Pasco County commissioners unanimously disbanded that Rural Citizens Advisory Committee for being too negative. I want to play a short clip from that meeting. Here's Pasco Commissioner Ron Oakley speaking in January at that county commission meeting right before the advisory committee was disbanded. You're listening to WMNF Tampa. We uh, set up a rural advisory committee to help me decide what needs to happen in the rural area where we do not have all the uh, rules and restrictions and I say restrictions, there are, there are rules to follow for development and what's happening in the rural area. Well, we were formed, and if anybody listened to the uh, uh, planning commission the other day, they brought up my name a few times that I wouldn't allow them in our, our first meeting where we were forming that advisory committee. They said I wouldn't let them talk about the RV park. It wasn't on our agenda that day. It was an enclave that we would probably get to as we had more meetings. But in the meeting the other day, they referred to it that I wouldn't allow them to speak to that item. And because it wasn't on the agenda, we were not there. We were trying to set up the advisory committee like the board had addressed me to take care of for them. And that was the purpose of that meeting, not for them to attack me on different projects that were going to come up in the uh, Northeast rural area. And uh, since then, at the planning commission, our chairman of the rural advisory committee on her own came and spoke before the planning commission against the RV park as chairman. And no one, I don't think anyone directed her to do so. But she did. And I don't think that's the way this advisory committee should work, I think. And to let you know, we've had three or four meetings, haven't gotten a lot of good advice from this committee, to say the least, to be able to advise you on much of anything, because most of the answers coming from it are negative or no. We can't do that. We don't want to do that. We we don't want traffic down. Uh, County Road 41, that's arterial road from the interstate to Dade City. We have to have traffic on that, but they've said no to that. 
They don't want any development around that intersection, which is a major intersection of Pasco County as you come from the north down 75. They don't want anything there. And it just, the it's not working right now because I'm not getting advice. I'm getting negative no's about a lot of things. Well, that was Pasco County Commissioner Ron Oakley speaking during a meeting in January. And later in that meeting, uh, I think it sounded like a staff member perhaps brought up the idea, well, you could just disband this committee. And that's actually what happened. And he was referring there to the chair of the committee, the Rural Citizens Advisory Committee. And while while that was playing, my guest Lisa Moretti raised her hand that he was referring to her. So Lisa, what was your reaction when you heard that your the, the, the advisory committee that you had been chairing was was disbanded? Well, it's really surprising. Um, one, uh, Mr. Oakley really misrepresented what happened at the Planning Commission. Uh, as the committee chair, I came to the Planning Commission and said, uh, I come to you wearing two hats. One, as the chair of the NERAC committee, we would, I would ask you to delay for 60 days on this decision and let my committee have a chance to give you some recommendations about how they feel about this. And Unfortunately, multiple times during public comment at our NERAC committee meetings, the public asked, what about the RV park? And they were told on more than one occasion that that was not to be discussed. And so I said, you know, we haven't had a chance to discuss it. And it would be, I think, more transparent to give the committee a chance to look at what should happen with this RV park. Um, so a little bit misrepresented there. Uh, it was actually Commissioner Moore that said, well, if they're not doing what you don't want them to do, you know, just go ahead and disband them. Um, no one ever asked me, talked to me, called me, anything, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> didn't even ask me to come to the, the next meeting, you know. Um, the way that I found out that it had been disbanded was that the Tampa Bay Times called me for comment. Um, I found it really uh sad in one respect because the committee was really a nice diverse amalgam of different interests and stakeholders in the region. I think the planning office had done a phenomenal job of bringing multiple viewpoints to the table. And we all had the chance to get to know each other, each other's concerns, what we could do, what people wanted to see happen, what they didn't want to see happen. Um, I, I thought it was a really great experience in terms of allowing the community to understand each other's vision for what should happen. A little bit further downstream from what you played, um, Mr. Oakley actually said that his vision for the rural area was lots of density surrounded by trees so you didn't notice it, and that to him was rural. I totally disagree with that. I'm very negative on that. <laughs> um, I, I think it was disappointing that when you have citizens telling you what they want for their area and it doesn't agree with what you want, that that means that we aren't doing anything. There was actually a, a whole node that was voted on to be yes for development and that um, exit 293 that he was talking about off of I-75 is actually zoned for an employment center. We have commercial right around that. What we were opposing was that someone wanted to put in a truck stop and Right now, as that intersection, that whole interchange exists, you go from doing, let's be honest, 95 on 75 at that point <laughs> to an off-ramp at 25. So we end up pulling a lot of people out of the ditch over there. Um, you know, it's a country community. We all help each other out. We, we are pulling people out and helping people, you know, figure out what they just did wrong. And to be able to try to put an 18 wheeler looking to fuel up on that interchange would not work. And when it was originally designed, it was consciously designated as an exit that would not be commercially high intensity development. They wanted this to be, it's basically the portal to um, the Northeast rural area and to Pasco County. And so they wanted this to be the hello entry. And that wasn't, you know, warehouses and high industrial. So that's where that whole argument got kind of wonky. <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of running out of time in this segment, but I want to give you um, maybe a, a, a moment or two to let people know if they'd like to find out more about this issue and get involved 
in uh, working, worrying, working with issues in rural Northeast Pasco County, where can they go? Where can they find information? Tell you start. <laughs> um, so um, outside of uh, Lisa's website, I would say um, a quick plug for my campaign website, which is kellysmithfordadecity.com. Um, and I say that only because you can contact me through that and, and be happy to um, help with some resources and, and helping to get people information. Um, there are also a number of Facebook groups. Um, the Voice of Dade City is one um, that is particularly active in that area. And uh, my No St. Joe RV Park site that is a group of us that manage that. Um, that's a great resource for what's going on, what people can do to help. Um, we always appreciate to the commissioners. I just always ask that people. And Lisa's breaking up a bit. Uh, I don't know if we're oh. gonna get, oh, there she goes. Lisa, you're back. So um, okay, you were saying write to the commissioners, so, I believe. Yeah, it, you know, anyone can write to our county commissioners and tell them that they don't think that this development idea is a good one. Um, I always ask that people CC us because uh, sometimes those go into a black hole and we don't find out that people are actually sending those in. So I appreciate it when people include us in their in their letters. We always ask that people be respectful too. And when is the um, there's also um, an ongoing meeting every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. at the IHOP on 301. <laughs> And that's an open meeting. Everyone's welcome. When will the commissioners decide about this RV park? So we have um, our next uh, meeting is coming up in April. Is it April 4th, 5th or April 8th? I can't remember. Whatever the Tuesday is. <laughs> Kelly will look at the website really so quick for me. The Tuesday I'm not in April. calendar girl. I'm really bad at calendar. Um, but yes, it's coming up and, and we welcome everyone to be there. Unfortunately, the meetings are at 1.30 in the afternoon at the old historic Dade City Courthouse. Um, and I know that's right in the middle of people's work days and not too much of a fan of them doing it that way. Well, I wanna thank you both for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Lisa and Kelly, thanks so much. Thank you so thank much, you so Sean. Much. Lisa Moretti was the chair of a Rural Citizens Advisory Committee in Northern Pasco County. Her website is nostjoerpark.com. Kelly Smith is a candidate for Dade City Commission and is, was, is part of the Northeast Pasco Citizens Oversight Committee. You're, after this short music break, we're going to hear about a bill in Tallahassee that's being fought by environmentalists and by the solar power industry. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We'll be right back after this very short music break. <laughs> 